Hey guys, Nurse Kat. In this part of our ICU crash course, um, we're gonna talk about care of the critically ill and we're gonna talk about arterial blood gases. Analyzing ABGs is important, but if you don't practice it every day, where do you start? Well, you'll often see clinical signs first, like confusion, restlessness, apprehension. Those are the things that prompt you to need to draw an ABG. For some of us, it's easy to get confused when looking at the pH, bicarb, carbon dioxide, oxygen, all at the same time, and then is it compensated or not? To be honest, the bicarb and pH take a little while to correct. Even though that is the correct and logical place to begin when analyzing ABGs, in the presence of COVID-19, providers are seeing mixed respiratory and metabolic acidosis. Even experienced professionals can struggle with interpreting that, including figuring out what to do about it. When you're first learning to analyze ABGs, especially in your critically ill client, look at the PaO2 and PaCO2 first. A lot of times your providers will look at PaO2 with their ABGs anyway, because they're trying to make sure that the blood is oxygen rich as much as the peripheral indicators say that they are. So look at the PaO2 and PaCO2 first. This helps you know how much oxygen is in the blood. Sometimes your providers will draw ABGs specifically to look at the PaO2 level. If the PaO2 trends down, the patient's not getting enough oxygen, it should always be more than 75 millimeters of mercury. If the PaCO2 trends up, the patient is not breathing carbon dioxide out. It should always be between 35 and 45 millimeters of mercury. Together, these two values can be used to calculate lung effectiveness at gas exchange. So how well the lungs are actually doing their job at exchanging gas. If the PaO2 reaches 60, this is too low. The peripheral saturation on the monitor might still be 90%, which would seem okay, right? And the patient would probably look fine too. But what it really means is that if the patient tries to do pretty much anything, they're going to have a breathing crisis. People with underlying or rapidly changing breathing conditions may also have increased PaCO2 because the lungs or perfusion to the lungs is not allowing the release of carbon dioxide. When these changes happen at the same time, there will be trouble for the patient pretty soon. Start looking for the next best way to oxygenate or ventilate this person immediately. 